Hi everyone, let's make this molecule. On the left hand side we have an alkene, at the top we have an ether, and on the right we've got an ester. So multiple functional groups to choose from, I'm just going to pick one of these to target that will be easy in my retrosynthesis, and that's the ether. To do a CO bond disconnection, well there's a choice of two sides around the ether, it'll be much easier if I disconnect here, because it's much easier for me to do substitution reactions when there's a nearby pi system to help me out. So that disconnection will take me back to this alcohol and I'll just need some sort of benzyl system with a leaving group, just X there representing a leaving group. Now we're going to have to be a bit careful about how exactly we do that substitution reaction because some types of ether synthesis won't work here, specifically things like the Williamson ether synthesis that requires you to deprotonate the alcohol because if you form an intermediate like this, there is a high risk of a fragmentation reaction occurring like this. So we won't be able to get to the product because this could well be fast as an intramolecular process. This fragmentation is often called a retroaldol reaction because it's the reverse of a standard aldol reaction between an enolate and an aldehyde. I'll come back to some reagents for this later, but I'm pretty happy that there are plenty of cheap reagents that have a benzyl group with a leaving group attached. Okay, disconnecting further, I noticed that that hydroxyl group is in a 1-3 relationship to the ester and 1-3 difunctionalized compounds are often made by enolate chemistry and in this case, just using a normal aldol reaction. That will put a disconnection here and take me back to this aldehyde and also ethyl acetate. Ethyl acetate, of course, is a cheap and readily available solvent. And my plan is to enolize here where there's an acidic proton somewhere around about pKa20. Now, what do I do with the aldehyde? So we can use our disconnection approach quite strictly here and notice that there's two functional groups. And again, they're in a 1-3 relationship. So we should be thinking about using enolates and aldol reactions again for this, but it's not necessarily obvious how we do that straight away. So what I'm going to do is do a functional group into conversion to force my hand towards an aldol reaction in the knowledge that I know that there are reactions to form alkenes that involve dehydration and I can do an elimination reaction to get rid of that water. And now I have the one free hydroxyl group to the carbonyl. I can do the aldol disconnection again and that takes me back to two identical molecules. This is a sign of a good disconnection. Isobutyraldehyde is cheap and readily available and here we can just do a self-reaction where we can form the enolate on one of the aldehydes and that's nucleophilic for any remaining aldehyde that's there and we can get an aldol reaction like this. Okay, so before getting to a forward synthesis, we need a reagent to help us form the ether on the base sensitive aldol product. There are several ways of doing this, but essentially we need to make sure we use a more mild reagent and a mechanism that doesn't formally deprotonate the hydroxyl group. One such reagent we could use is the trichloroacetimidate. This functional group is often referred to as a TCA. To make one of these reagents, you start with the alcohol that you want. So in my disconnection, I need benzyl alcohol, and we react it with trichloroacetonitrile in the presence of potassium hydroxide. The base will initially deprotonate the alcohol, which can attack as a nucleophile onto the electrophilic nitrile. That will give me this addition product, which can then pick up a proton, probably from water as the co-solvent, and that gives me my reagent of benzyl trichloroacetimidate, but that's a bit of a mouthful, so people just call this benzyl TCA the benzyl group normally abbreviated to BN. So to use that reagent, I get my alcohol that's sensitive to base, and I react it with my benzyl TCA in the presence of a catalytic amount of acid, or alternatively a Lewis acid. Commonly in this context, you often see people using scandium triflate. The TCA reagent itself is pretty stable in the freezer once you've made it, so you can store a stash of it, and the reaction will only occur when it's activated. So if I protonate the TCA reagent, there's a basic lone pair on that nitrogen, I've set myself up with a really good leaving group and I can do an SN2 reaction. The SN2 transition state here is stabilized by that phenol group, so that makes this reaction quite fast and indeed much faster than any direct attack onto the CN double bond. There's a very strong driving force for this mechanism. Firstly, we'll use that really acidic proton so that the proton itself can go off and activate another starting material. And that leaves us with an ether that's pretty unreactive, but also this very stable amide product. The very stable bonding setup is really good for the enthalpic contribution to the driving force for this reaction. Another really useful thing about forming this byproduct is that it's often easily separable because it crystallizes really easily. So you can remove this by trituration. That's where you dissolve up your crude product in a small amount of a very non-polar solvent, for example, and the polar amide will crush out as white crystals, which you can then just filter off. And joining all these ideas together, we just need to work out the reagents for a forward synthesis. I'm starting off with isobutyraldehyde. We need to make it do a self-aldol reaction. So we need some of the enolate form to be present at the same time as the aldehyde, 
a sensible choice of base would be something that analyzes in equilibrium. Something like sodium methoxide would work well here. I'll also just note in passing that because we've got those two methyl groups in the product, there's no acidic proton next to that carbonyl. So E1CB type elimination is not possible and we won't form a condensation product under these conditions for this specific reaction. But I did need to set up a different elimination. I need that hydroxyl group to leave. Now it's not a great leaving group at present, so I'll make it into a good leaving group by reacting it with tosyl chloride and pyridine. That will give me this product with the leaving group. And there's only one possible proton that could be eliminated here, which I'm highlighting in red. And it should be reasonably easy to do some sort of E2 mechanism on this. I'm just going to use a standard base for E2 type eliminations like potassium terpetoxide. And that's going to give me the alkene product that I need in my synthesis. The next step was to do an aldol reaction. So I need to react this with the enolate of ethyl acetate. An easy way to form an enolate here would, would just be to form the lithium enolate using LDA at minus 78 degrees. LDA is a strong irreversible deprotonating agent with this structure which is bulky enough not to be nucleophilic into the ester at minus 78 degrees C. That'll give me the aldol product here with the free hydroxyl group. And all I need to do now is add my benzyl TCA that I prepared earlier, dissolve both of these up in the same flask, and then just add some catalytic acid to get the reaction going. Some sort of readily available sulfonic acid will probably do the job quite well here. And that takes me to my product. I'm going to be using this chemistry in context in the natural product synthesis in an upcoming video. If you found the discussion useful, please do drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel so that you're alerted when that video drops.